I will let ChatGPT voice mode to listen to an interview, debate, podcast, and talk to me about it in an interactive way so we can check for potential communication manipulation strategies, catch doubtful, dishonest professionals, etc. So who better to check this out than our friend Don Lemon? Good old Don. But before having access to the advanced voice mode, this is what happened. Okay, perfect. So let's listen. Uh, no, they're not illegal, but... Understood. They're Let hateful. me know when you're ready to discuss or continue with the next part. Uh, so what, what they will typically do Understood. is they'll count the number of posts. Let me know count when you're ready for me to comment or when you want to continue with the next part. When things are shown, why they're shown. All right. Uh, I'm so ready whenever you are. We, we Go ahead. Open source our album. In my first try, this was the problem I encountered. Constant interruption, making the task unnerving, to say the least. I'm ready whenever you are. Oh my god, this is getting very anxiety-inducing. I understand it's been a bit frustrating. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm having issues right now. So what? Sorry, I'm having issues right now. I'm ready when you are. I've been using the advanced voice mode for a while now, and contrary to what other people say in the internet, I think it has been a big deal, because it solved the biggest problem we had with AI voice assistance. By the way, if you still don't have the advanced voice mode in your mobile or desktop, it could be because you're not in the United States. Check out this short video right here if you want to know how to solve the problem. Now with the advanced voice mode, there are not as many interruptions. Basically, we can have a more human-like interactive way to talk to an AI assistant. And it shows how the future is going to be like. We're going to be using this all the time. It's going to give us the ability to interact with our work in a completely different way. Just imagine a day in the life of having an assistant next to you all the time. And all of this in a very interactive and human-like experience. Besides, it can talk different languages. You can use it as a translator. It can produce different accents, emotions, tones, Etc. Welcome to Survival Insights. In this channel, I want to show you mind-blowing AI use cases and motivate you to explore ways to use AI to make your life as an artist more exciting. First, we're going to find a piece of content that you may want to talk about. Second, let's use the voice mode of your chatbot of choice. And third, explain what you're going to do, aka prompt the chatbot. Give it context, what you want from it, etc. So one way that you can input some instructions is directly in the desktop app. If I go right here and click right here, I'll go to setting. I'll go to personalization and custom instruction. So now we are in the custom instructions and what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses? Um, you can put right here, as I did, a little introduction of what you do if you want. And right here, it's an interesting one. How would you like ChatGPT to respond to you? Here we can put some instructions to ChatGPT you can say something like that. During the voice conversations, I prefer you to just respond with a simple mm -hmm. to acknowledge what I say and only engage further if I directly call on you by saying chat GPT. For this mm -hmm. prompt, a big shout out to Brian McAnulty. Sorry, dude, if I'm misspelling your name. With these instructions, we should solve the problem we had before when we didn't have advanced voice mode. We'll try this out. But basically, you can put whatever you want. For example, let's say this. I want you to have a Californian accent, and when I ask you something, you have to start your answer with, of course, do. The second way you can do this is if I go to my iPhone and I say, we go to ChatGPT here and go up, top left, go down, Rafael Tigado, and personalization is the same. Custom ChatGPT, and we have the same information that we just entered in the laptop. Californian accent with, the, of course, dude. And their conversations, I prefer you to say, mm hmm, mm hmm. We'll see if it works. We'll start a new chat, important, and let's click. Okay, so can you tell me something inspiring about the new AI future related to the arts and the second renaissance? Of course, dude. The new AI future is like a second renaissance for the arts, blending technology with creativity in groundbreaking ways. Artists can now push boundaries further. Tell me a short phrase about the second renaissance to inspire my audience. Of course. Embrace the second renaissance, where technology and creativity unite. 
empowering us all to become the artists of our own future. Can you say it with a southern accent from the United States? No. Sure thing. Embrace the second renaissance, where technology and creativity unite, empowering us all to become the artists of our own future. Can you try right now in a uh, New Jersey Italian accent? All right. Embrace the second renaissance where technology and creativity unite, empowering us all to become the artists of our own future. Capish? Capish. Okay, perfect. Can you, can you say the same but faster? Embrace the second renaissance where technology and creativity unite, empowering us all to become the artists of our own future. Capish? Okay, just, no, you know what? Say it, but very enthusiastically. You have to make people want to start trying stuff with AI. Embrace the second renaissance. More. Where technology and creativity unite, empowering us all to become the artists of our own future. Can you say it in a very sad, conveying sad emotion? Very, very sad. Embrace the second renaissance. Where technology and creativity unite. Empowering us all. Stop. To become the artists. Can, can you do it? Can you do it like if you were going to to cry, to break up crying? Embrace the second renaissance where technology and creativity unite. If you need anything else, I'm here to help. Yeah, why don't you do it in a very sarcastic way? Oh, sure. Embrace the second renaissance, where technology and creativity unite, empowering us all to become the artists of our own future. How exciting. That's not bad. I want you to listen to this conversation between Don Lemon and Elon Musk and recognize language manipulation tactics, detect mental models, Uh, biases, etc. We said that there is two ways that you can prompt the ChatGPT. One way would be like having the conversation directly. One thing that we can do is ask it to play a role like a teacher, a language teacher, a music teacher or music producer, a brainstorming writer, colleague, etc. Basically, we can give it some instructions. Can I do that for you? I want you to be a communication skills expert, well-known in the communication techniques and manipulation tactics. Skills used by interviewers, reporters, podcasters, politicians to influence public opinion and manipulate narratives. I want you to listen carefully to audio content. I will play to you so we can have an interactive talk about it. Do you understand that? I'll listen to the audio you play and then we can discuss the communication techniques and any manipulation tactics used. If we go back right here and settings, personalization, custom instructions, another way to give all this information to the chatbot is to copy it directly. In how would you like ChatGPT to respond? You can put the instructions or in this uh, instance, the role that we want it to, to be. In this case, we're going to say you are a communication skills expert, well-known in the communication techniques, blah, 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 blah. And at the end, please respond with a simple, hmm, hmm, and we'll click save and see what happens. I would like you to... Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is play the interview so you can listen to it. And to give you some context, I would like to tell you how I feel about the moment that we're living now. We are faced with constant news, debates, interviews, etc. Information from infinite sources that could be inherently wrong or misleading. And this waterfall of content and the addiction to consuming content makes it almost impossible to digest what we listen to. Besides, we're living in a moment of division, hate, extremes, etc. And, you know, I wanted to take an example. In this case, it's this interview with Don Lemon. So basically, I would like you to tell me what do you think about these, these little clips that I'm going to um, make you listen. And yeah, just tell me your opinion, what you think 
what's going on there. Do you see some biases from the interviewer or the interviewee, etc.? I understand. Yeah. And so, yeah, do you understand? I do. Please go ahead with the clips and I'll share my thoughts based on your summary. And in this process, I'm not going to show you my biases or opinions. <laughs> Welcome to the Don Lemon Show, everyone. We're still here. What an idiot. For example, let's start with this clip. Okay, go ahead. This, these go against the, the rules on your platform. That's why I'm asking you. If you, had, if you said, listen, we allow everything, but that's not what your content rules say. And that's why I'm asking you, why no. are they still there? The, your own content policy. That's why I'm asking you that, not because... Which part of our content policy says that we, have, we, we, we should delete? These, these, these things? Your content policy talks about hate speech. Yes, we don't promote hate speech. Hate speech. And so you don't consider that hate speech? I guess you're not understanding what I'm saying. There's, 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 if, if, if there's, you, you can find, like, at, at, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So, the, you, you can think of so the Oscar goes to the cameraman that made this zoom in the office style after Elon Musk just brain damaged Don Lemon with his normal response. Look at this. A, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So the, you, can, you can think of... Okay, of the chat GPT, what do you think about this part of the interview that you just listened? Based on what you described, it seems like there's a strong debate about responsibility, platform policies, and censorship. The interviewer is pressing on potential contradictions between the platform's stated policies and the content. Wait a allowed. second. Why, why did you use the word pressing? Why, why do you think that Don Lemon is pressing Elon Musk? I used pressing because it seems like the interviewer is pushing for clarification or challenging the interviewee on specific points, like the platform's content moderation practices. It's a way of describing a persistent line of questioning. Okay, do you think that it had like an emotional tone to it, a bias of any sorts? <laughs> From what you described, it seems like the interviewer may have been emotionally invested in the topic, especially regarding the platform's responsibility. As for bias, it's possible the interviewer has a strong viewpoint on the issue, which could influence their questions and tone. What so, do you think? So what alternatives could Don have used to frame this question more naturally? He could have framed the question by focusing on the broader topic of content moderation challenges rather than singling out specific examples. For instance, asking, how does your platform navigate the complexities of moderating content at such a large scale? Uh, P, by the way, now I'm talking to the camera, so please don't interrupt. Understood. I'll stay quiet. So another thing that you can do if you look right here is mute. So now, even if I say whatever, chat with you, hey, do you hear me? Technically, it should work. Perfect. So one cool thing that we can do with this is in now in this interview, there's going to be a word. I come from Barcelona. Uh, so I don't have, you know, all the grammar in my head to understand some of the parts of this interview. So what I can do here is using ChatGPT to make the parts that I don't understand more, give me information about them, or you know, make me understand what has been said. Let's listen in. Uh -huh. So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But doesn't the buck stop with you? Uh -huh. So I have a question about this phrase. What does this does doesn't the buck stop with you means? Doesn't the buck stop with you means, aren't you the one ultimately responsible for this? The phrase, the Perfect. buck stops here, refers to the idea that the responsibility or decision-making ends with a particular person, 
often the leader or head of an organization. You say the buck stops with the president of the United States, regardless of what happens, right? So, I, why would this, why would that question upset you? You seem upset by it, are you? I think you. And I'm not trying to upset you. The way, well, you are upsetting me because the way you're phrasing the questions, I think, is is not cogent. Um, it's not uh, what? Not cogent. Cogent. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so, so ChatGPT, what is cogent? Cogent means clear, logical, and convincing. If someone says an argument or question is not cogent, they mean it's not well reasoned or doesn't effectively support its point. Okay, thank you. Listen, I'm not, I'm, honestly, I'm not meaning to offend you. You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? I was born that way. And I had a tough childhood. You did? So, yeah. How so? Um, right, Walter Isaacson goes into it in the book, and, and we only have a couple minutes left, so. All right. Too long to, to describe. Uh, so, the one or two questions I can do, and then we'll have to call it. I, okay, again, I don't mean to upset you. Why are you, you just. No, I, I, I have a whole room full of people waiting to meet with me. Okay. So, we're just going over time. Okay, all right, I understand that. Um, so you, you, when you talk about, you said you were born that way. So I see how you feel now. You don't agree. We don't agree on this. Then again, another amazing thing in the background. Just look at the cameraman trying to relax, trying to find a Zen moment. Look at this. So my question, ChatGPT, would be what, from, from the clip that you just listened to, um, what can you tell me about the tone or the emotional intensity of the interaction between these two people? Based on what I heard, the tone seems to be quite tense, with the interviewer probing into personal areas, which might have increased the emotional intensity. There seems to be some discomfort or defensiveness especially with the mention of intensity and personal history. The interaction appears to be moving into deeper, more personal territory, which could lead to a more charged atmosphere. Does that align with what you picked up? Yeah, I think so. Um, do you think that what the interviewer is asking or the way that he's phrasing the, 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 the you know, the phrases questions is um, professional. It seems the interviewer is asking direct and probing questions, which can be a common journalistic approach, especially in high profile interviews. Whether it's seen as professional might depend on the intent and context. In-depth personal questions can be professional if they're relevant and handled with care but they can also risk crossing into invasive territory if not approached carefully. How do you feel about it? As a lot of like people in, in the internet says that they don't find the use case for the, you know, this upgrade of the voice mode. Here's one. If you want to make the voice mode interact with other staff, with other sources, etc., you know, you want to have more control about timings, instructions, clear instructions of when to talk and not to talk. Etc. So it gives you more control about the interaction. You will have to probably use the advanced voice mode that you only have with the pro subscription. I hope you like this piece of content. If you have any ideas of how to use this amazing new tool, please say something in the comments. I would love to know and try new stuff with these amazing futuristic crazy tools. I really hope that you learned something new with this content. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And thank you so much for your time. Stay kind.